All right, so we got interrupted, but now we're going to finish this one. So what we have is we have drawn this picture using this, um, and uh, now we're asked to evaluate. So for the first one, it says, tell me what f of 5 is. So the question is, who owns the 5? So remember that this is just a number line. This was negative 4. This is 0, 1, 2, 3. So 5 is in this territory over here, which means he belongs to the last thing that we drew, or he belongs anywhere where 5 is bigger than 4. So he belongs to this function. So all we have to do is substitute in. So in this case, f of 5 belongs to only this part, and 5 plus 6 is 11. Okay, so the point 5 comma 11 is on this part of the piecewise function. So the next one says f of negative 6. So where's the negative 6? Negative 6 is going to be over here. And so that's the first part that we drew. And so we need to find out x is less than or equal to negative 4, so it's going to be this part right here and we're going to shove in a negative 6. So f of negative 6 is going to give us negative 5 times negative 6 is 30 plus 12 is 42. So again, the point negative 6 comma 42 is on the graph. And then we have f of negative 0.4. Okay, f of negative 0.4. So where is negative 0.4? It's going to be in this area right here. It's in between these two red lines. So what does that mean? It means that I need the middle part of this piecewise function, and it does not matter what x I give you, the corresponding y-coordinate will be 4. Okay, so I could give you negative 1, it's going to be 4. I could give you 2, it's going to be 4. Okay, so f of negative 0.4 is going to be 4 because that's the equation you are given. And then finally, I've got negative point, or sorry, negative 4.5. So where is negative 4.5? That's going to be over here with this line. So same thing, come back up to here. So it's helpful to draw a picture first. So for f of negative 4.5, well, 5 times negative 4.5 is, hang on, so negative 4.5 times 5 is, and I get negative 22, 5 plus 12 is going to be negative 10.5. Okay, so you've got a couple other ones like that on your assignment. Um, and now uh, we're going to use this next problem to set up the difference quotient. So, this says 5f of x equals 7x plus 7, find each of the following, and it says find f of p. So, if f of x is 7x plus 7, well, then what is f of p? Well, wherever there's an x, I see an x. So, guess what I'm going to put in its, in its place? Trash your x and put a p. So that's going to be this one. We have 7p plus 7. And then I have f of negative r. So for f of negative r, wherever there's an x, I'm going to put a negative r. So 7 times negative r plus 7. Well, 7 times a negative is going to give you a negative 7r plus 7. Okay? And then we have... Wherever there's an x, we're going to put an m minus 8. So f of m minus 8 means instead of 7x, I'm going to do 7 m minus 8 plus 7. And you could leave it like that, or you can clean it up a little bit. So if I distribute, I'll get 7m minus 56 plus 7, which will be 7m minus 49. Okay, so that's going to be your final answer, and that takes us to the difference quotient. So this last one, don't be afraid, it's just real-life application.
Okay, so it's it's the same setup as what we did on the other one, but it, it gives you context as to why you would need to do this. And so that's number 15, and then number 16, you're going to fly an airplane. So for 13 and 14, we're going to do what's called the difference quotient. And the difference quotient, again, has its foundation in calculus. And the formula is going to be F of X plus H, which means I'm going to trash the X and put X plus H in its place. Then minus F of X all over H. So for the first one, I am given that my original func you can see my original function is a negative 7x plus 6. Okay? My original function is a negative 7x plus 6. So what I want to do is take this function and put it into what we call the difference quotient. And again, this is foundational for calculus, so we're just going to mess with it. We're not really going to do much with it. So what do I do first? Take my function. So I'm just going to do this part first. And wherever there's an x, I'm going to replace it with an x plus h. So instead of a negative 7x, I'm going to put x plus h plus 6. Okay, so rewrite your function in terms of x plus h minus. And then just write the function the way it was. So what's the function the way it was? Negative 7x plus 6. Okay, so if you'll notice, if I just put an x right here, I'll have the exact same thing. Okay, all over h. And what we want to do is clean it up. So now that we've done the hard part and set it up, now we're going to do some um, algebra. So I know how to distribute. So I have a negative 7x minus 7h plus 6. And then this negative changes those signs. So plus 7x minus 6 all over h. So now what can I do? Well, I got a negative 7x and a positive 7x. So after we substitute in and get this far, and then distribute, okay, that's going to be your next step. So substitute everything in, then distribute, and now you want to start killing stuff off. So I have a negative 7x and a positive 7x, okay. I got a positive 6 and a negative 6. So all that's left is a negative 7h over h. And remember, h represents a number, so any number divided by itself is 1, so your answer is negative 7. Now, this, like I said, is foundational to calculus. Come back up here. This makes a line. And what's the slope of the line? The slope is negative 7. So if you come down here, you find out that you just confirmed, using calculus, that the slope of the line is negative 7. So this difference quotient is just slope on steroids. Okay, it is slope on steroids. But what happens if we make it a little bit more exciting? So for the next one, what we have, we're going to apply the difference quotient again. But I have x squared plus 7. So this one is not a line. He doesn't have a slope right off the bat. So I can't, I can't be sneaky like what I was last time. I actually have to do a little bit more work this time. So what do I do first? Wherever there's an x, I put an x plus h. So I have, instead of x squared, I have x plus h squared plus 7. Okay, minus, just rewrite your original function. So x squared plus 7 all over h. Now be careful and remember that this part actually means x plus h times x plus h, and you're going to have to FOIL it. Don't just think that that's x squared plus h squared. Okay, so you're going to have to do first times first, do the outer times the outer, inner times the inner, and the last one of each. So we call that FOIL. All right, so if I do that, that's going to give me an x squared plus 2xh's 
plus an h squared plus 7 minus x squared minus 7. And then what do I do? Start killing stuff off. So I have x squared and negative x squared. 7 and negative 7. And what did I just write 7 for? Sorry, that's an h. All right, h. And now what do you notice? I've got two terms left, and what do they both have? They both have an h. So this h will reduce, and that's going to leave me with 2x. And then one of these will reduce, so that will leave me with h. Okay, so again, that's kind of sort of foundational for calculus. But that gives you a really, really good uh, head start on 3.1. And luckily, 3.2 is easier. And so 3.2 will just be one video, I think. Um, and then we'll go from there.